It's predictions time. Yep, it's that time of year again where I give my Premier League predictions for the 2022-23 season. I'm going to predict the entirety of the Premier League table, give three bold predictions outside of the Premier League table that I think will happen during the course of the campaign, as well as give my takes on who will be the winners of each of Europe's major leagues, as well as the Champions League and the Championship. All information is correct as of the 3rd of August 2022, which is the day I'm recording this, so Please don't hold me to account for any transfers that happen over the next few weeks because obviously I'm not clairvoyant, I can't see into the future, You just I'm just going on what I know right now. And if you go on to enjoy this video, please don't forget, hit the like, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and let me know your predictions down in the comments below. But without further ado, here's mine. We'll start off with the Premier League table, and in 20th, I'm going to go with Bournemouth. I just don't think their recruitment has been very good so far, they've only brought in two players as of now, which are Ryan Fredericks and Marcus de Vernier, and I think their squad is, is championship level. I don't think it's a Premier League quality squad. Yes, David Briggs' return from obviously his cancer treatments is wonderful news. Dominic Slanky will have a point to prove, um, given his struggles in the Premier League with Bournemouth uh, a few seasons ago, as will Scott Parker, considering his last season in the Premier League was relegation with Fulham but I just don't have much confidence in Bournemouth, I'm afraid, so I think they'll go straight back down. In 19th place is my first bold call of the video. It's gonna be Southampton, I think. I don't have any faith in them right now. I mean, last season was meant to be their reset season in my eyes, where they just consolidated and didn't really come close to any trouble, but they were very close to relegation. Uh, they dropped standards, especially at the end of the campaign. They've made some interesting signings, yes, obviously like said Gavin Bazunu and Romeo Lavia. They're, they have potential, but they are still quite raw. Joel Ariba, I think, is a fantastic signing from Rangers, but I'm not quite sure about Ralph Hasenhutl right now. I think this is his make or break campaign, and I think it's going to be his break. It'll either be a case, I think, of Hasenhutl just stays on for way too long and eventually the Saints are just unsalvageable by the time he departs, or he leaves early on in the campaign and someone else comes in to steer them to safety. But I think it's going to be the former, or at the very least, closer to the former. In 18th place, and the final team to be relegated, it pains me to say it, but I'm going with Nottingham Forest. Their transfer policy has been almost the exact opposite to Bournemouth. They've signed so many players, and some of them are quite smart, including Nico Williams, Jesse Lingard, if he can get his head in gear, Dean Henderson, Awanee from Union Berlin, and Omar Richards from Bayern Munich. And obviously the transformation that they underwent last season under Steve Cooper's guidance from championship relegation candidates to actually being a part of the Premier League as a result of winning the playoffs is quite frankly remarkable. But their scouts can approach the transfer market. It could work, but it could also spectacularly implode on themselves as well. See, for example, Fulham in 2018-19. But I think it's going to be more like a Cardiff season in 2018-19 as well, whereby they're underdogs, not many people give them a chance, but they come really close to survival, but ultimately fall the last hurdle. In 17th place, just outside the relegation zone, I'm going with Leeds. I think they'll finish in the exact same spot that they finished last time out. They just about survived by the skin of their teeth and their two key players, namely Rafinha and Calvin Phillips, have both departed over the summer. And their season may well depend on how well their replacements perform. And yes, those replacements look very solid, like sort of Mark Rocca, Tyler Adams, Brendan Aronson and Luis Tinistera do look pretty impressive signings who are unproven in the Premier League but could work. But how can they adapt? Will they be able to adapt to the Premier League and to lead to style of play? Uh, that is, I think, the big question and probably is going to be the depending factor on whether or not Leeds survive this season. Could be wrong, of course, and this prediction could look very foolish in nine months' time for both good and bad reasons. But for now, based on what I know, I'm going to put them in 17th. 16th place, I'm going to go with the only newly promoted team that I haven't featured yet, and that is Fulham. They stormed to immediate promotion with bags of goals, most notably from Alexander Mitrovic, who got 43, and their transfers have been very impressive. They haven't signed a load of players, but they have signed some very good ones, like Sir Juan Palinha, Kevin Mbabu, and Bernd Lehner, whose transfer actually went through as of the, on the day I'm recording this. That's a huge coup from Arsenal, I think, for just £8 million. Pounds. I think that's very impressive that they managed to get in. But there are a few question marks that I have over Fulham right now. Will Marco Silva be able to come back to the Premier League and adapt himself in the way that he did when he joined Hull in the 2017? 
How big will Fabio Carvalho's loss prove to be? And will Mitrovic finally make the step up after that amazing season that he had in the championship last season? I think if those three questions get answered positively, Fulham are going to finish in 16th. And certainly at least two of them will be. So... Yeah, 16th it is. 15th place, I'm going to go with Brentford. They had a really impressive debut campaign in the Premier League last time out, especially after Christian Eriksen joined. But, of course, the Dane is no longer there. He has moved on to Manchester United. But their transfers have still been excellent. Well, obviously, because it's Brentford and they have probably the best transfer recruitment policy in the entirety of the country. Especially the likes of Aaron Hickey and Keen Lewis Potter, both of whom are really bright talents who will sparkle in the Premier League. Plus, of course, they brought in really experienced ahead like Ben Mee as well and Tomas Stakosha, who could potentially rival uh, David Raya for the goalkeeping spot as well. But second season syndrome is definitely a thing and Brentford have to be wary of that. Leeds nearly succumbed to it last season. Sheffield United were absolutely decimated by it the year before. So Brentford have to be wary of it. But I think their recruitment policy is smart enough to mean that they will become a staple in the Premier League for the next few years. So 15th is where I'm going to put them for now. The team I've put in 14th place will experience a little bit of a drop off in standards from last year, but I'm going to go with Brighton. They obviously finished in ninth last time out, which is their best ever league finish in their entire history, which does give an indication that Potter's project, Grand Potter's project, is finally clicking into gear. But I'm just not sure about them up front at the moment. Yes, they've signed Dennis Undav from their sister club, Union San Giloise, but he is a little bit of a risk up front. Plus, they've already lost Ivas Pasuma, their midfield linchpin, and they're likely to lose Marco Correa, who was their player of the year last season, to Chelsea. And I think those two leaving will definitely hurt, especially since the recruitment to replace them has been basically minimal. If Dennis Undav clicks into gear, then they'll probably finish a little bit higher than 14th, maybe even 12th or 11th. But for now, 14th is the best I can give them. One place higher than Brighton, I've put Everton. They were awful last season, absolutely awful, and came dangerously close to sinking down to the championship for the first time during the Premier League era. But Frank Lampard has had the time to adjust to his squad and mould them in his image, and he's made some okay signings, especially James Tarkovsky on a free, although I'm not 100% sure about Dwight McNeil. But losing Richarlison is huge, even if it was for a substantial fee. After the chaos that was last season, I think they just need a reset season after, as I say, the chaos of last time out. So why not just settle for a pretty mediocre finish of 13th and then try to kick on the following year. In 12th place is going to be Wolves, I think. There were huge question marks when Bruno Lage was appointed as manager last year to replace Nuno Espirito Santo, but he did really well. He made them extremely solid at the back, but they just liked a little bit of bite up front, especially with Jimenez coming back into form after his horrendous injury in 2020-21. But they have made a couple of good signings. Obviously, they signed Juan Chi Han on a permanent basis from RB Leipzig, but Nathan Collins from Burnley is a really smart signing. And they've still got their star midfielders like Ruben Neves and Joao Moutinho, and Jimenez could return to his absolute stellar best. But like I said last season, I do think their project is fizzling out slightly, and you can tell that by how quickly they sunk off from potential European qualification to a meek 10th place finish. It won't be a, a massive drop off, of course, by any means, but it will be a noticeable one. So I'm going with 12th. In 11th place, I'm gonna go with Aston Villa. This will be a bit of an improvement after what happened last season. Obviously, Steven Gerrard has come in as manager and he's had a bit of time to adjust to his squad, much like Lampard has had at Everton. The signings that were made last year, the likes of Buendia and Ings is just two examples. They really need to step up. But with additions such as Diego Carlos, who is massive for Villa's defence, and Felipe Coutinho signed on a permanent basis from Barcelona, I think that's a sign that Villa are definitely going places. Their project may take a little bit of time, even if the fans may want a little bit of success, considering how much money has been invested into the club in the last couple of seasons into what seemed really good signings, but who haven't really proven themselves quite yet at Villa Park. But... I don't think Gerald is going to have a terrible season. I don't think he'll be sacked. So I reckon 11th place and just setting for a nice solid mid-table finish. Kicking off the top half is going to be Leicester. They've had a bit of a come down after two pushes that were ultimately unsuccessful for the Champions League. But last season, their intensity fell off, their sharpness dropped, but 
They remain solid enough to keep themselves in the top half. There are a few question marks lingering over the club, especially with regards to the financial fair play, hence why they haven't brought in any players and look set to lose a couple of players, potentially James Madison, who's subject to interest from Newcastle, and Kasper Schmeigel, who I'm apparently led to believe is joining Nice. Yuri Tielemans, he's still there for the time being, but he wants to go. I think that's very obvious, and Leicester might want to cash in before his contract expires. And of course, it might be Vardy's last dance at the age of 35. So with the lack of arrivals because of FFP and the potential departures of core players from the squad, I'm not 100% sure that Leicester will kick on as the, in the way that they want to. So I reckon their come down will continue and they'll finish in 10th. My second bowl call of this video is the team I've put in 9th. And I think it's going to be Crystal Palace. I really was impressed by them last season whenever I saw them. You know, Vieira had a fantastic debut campaign. And their squad, the young squad, is only looking like it's going to get better without losing too many key players. Yes, of course, Conor Gallagher has gone back uh, to Chelsea. Obviously, once his loan expired. But the likes of Mark Gehi, Ebedi and Michael Lise are only going to get better. Wilfred Zaha is still there somehow admittedly but he is still there as of the time of this recording and he's probably going to be the figurehead for this new palace era to try and guide those youngsters through and the upheaval is pretty much over they've made some good signings like to chris richards and sam johnston in goal and i really think that they're looking up rather than down for the first time in years as i say their upheaval is over and their project looks like it's ready to kick on and improve and I think they will improve this season and get a top half finish. In eighth place, and the team who just missed out on European qualification, I reckon it's going to be West Ham. Again, they qualified for the Europa Conference League for this season, and it shows how well they've been doing to remain the best of the rest. And in an attempt to keep that status as the best of the rest, they've made really smart moves in the transfer market again, likes of Wally Downs and Kieran Aguav, and obviously uh, Scamacca as well from Sassuolo. They might focus on trying to win the Conference League in order to get in the Europa League, especially if their league form takes a slight turn for the worse. So I think even though their business does look very smart and it looks like key players like Declan Rice and Jarrah Bowen are gonna stick around for this season, I can't really see them finishing in seven. The team who will pit West Ham to a European spot is Newcastle. I cannot believe I'm putting Newcastle in seventh place, but here we are. The revolution is a go on time side. Eddie Howe is ready to be the man to guide Newcastle back to European football, and their transfers have been great. I mean, they've signed Nick Pope, who's a really solid, solid addition in goal. Uh, Matt Target on the permanent basis after his loan move from Aston Villa is, again, another solid addition at left back. Sven Botman is a statement of intent signing him from Lille, especially since AC Milan wanted him. And with the likes of Ansan Maximan, Callum Wilson, and Joe Linton still sticking around, as well as Dan Byrne and Kieran Trippier, plus Gimaraes, of course. I really think it's ready to be make that step, make that step into European football. Yes, it will only be the Conference League. I don't think they can break the big six wall just yet. But if you give New Castle fans seventh place, I think they've got your hand off for it right now. Now we move on to the top six, and in my opinion, this is the most difficult season to predict the exact order of the top six in. But in sixth place, it's gonna be Arsenal, I think. I'm not quite sure about them just yet. Yes, they showed a lot of promise. They've had a fantastic preseason and their transfer business has been really smart. Gabriel Jesus up front is going to be a huge signing for them. Zinchenko is really versatile and Fabio Vieira is going to be a really good midfielder for them. So maybe they could make that step up to the promised land of the Champions League but there are still a few question marks in my opinion. I think the squads around them are still slightly stronger and playing in the Europa League will harm them. But if they do focus on the Europa League, then that might be their route into the Champions League and it might well be at the expense of league form. So even though I think sixth does actually seem a bit low for the quality that Arsenal have, you know, Bukayo Saka, Emil Smith Rowe, etc., etc. I think that's where they're going to finish. In fifth place, I think it's going to be a huge drop-off. 
for Chelsea. They started strong last season, but tailed off completely. The Lukaku experiment failed. He's now gone back to Inter Milan on loan. Timo Werner also looks like he's set to depart, going to Albe Leipzig. And Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen are both out the door, and potentially as Pelicueta and Marcus Alonso could follow suit. But they do already have a good quality squad, make no mistake about it. And it has been bolstered by the likes of Raheem Sterling and Kalidou Koulibaly. But something just seems wrong with Chelsea right now. I, I can't really quite put my finger on exactly what that is, but something just doesn't seem right about them. We saw the drop off in standards that they experienced last season and I have a feeling it might yet continue into this season, um, especially with the defense still needing a little bit of strengthening, even though they have signed Kula Bartley. So yeah. Fifth in Europa League football. Now we move on into the top four. And in fourth place, and a huge improvement from last season, it's going to be Manchester United. Last year, they were awful from pretty much the start of it to the finish under both Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Ralph Rennick, and they finished in sixth. They had key players not really stepping up, they bottled games, and there were many attitude problems that were well publicized, both inside and outside of the dressing room. But many of those supposed troublemakers or like fringe players or what have you have left including Pogba, Lingard and Matic as well plus they brought in a really really smart managerial appointment in the form of Eric Ten Hag. The Dutch Revolution is in effect and Lisandro Martinez and Christian Eriksen plus potentially Malassia as well are really shrewd additions. There are a couple of question marks over whether Ronaldo will stay and if they actually do bring in Frankie de Jong, who seems to have been in negotiations with them since 2015 at this point. But I think it'll be quite similar to when Louis van Gaal joined the club in 2014, whereby obviously they hadn't finished in the top four the season before, but then he takes them back into the top four, just a season of like getting them back to where Man United think they belong. And then unlike Van Gaal, in his second season, Ten Hag will really kick on and potentially challenge for the title. Into third place now and you know who you are if you're watching. I hope you're pleased with this one. I'm gonna go with Spurs. Although admittedly, it does hinge on two words. Antonio Conte. If he stays as manager of Spurs, they probably will finish in third. With the squad that they already have, Harry Kane and Hyunmin Son, plus obviously Dejan Kulisevsky really coming to the fore at the end of last season to drag Spurs into fourth and qualifying for the Champions League. And they've had their transfer business done really early as well, the likes of Jeff Spence, Clement Longley, Ivan Pedersic, Ivas Basuma and Richarlison, the latter of whom I do think is a bit overpriced at I think it was about 55, 60 million pounds. But the fact that they got those players in early shows that they had a really thought out transfer policy and that they got it done as early as they could so that the players could bed in and help the club continue to qualify for the Champions League as they did last season. But if Antonio Conte leaves, they are in massive trouble. And if he does leave, I really think that they'll drop down to potentially either fifth or sixth. So if he stays the full course, third place is very likely. And to be honest, I think he will. Finally, onto the top two. And as you'll be able to deduce by now, I think it's gonna be between Manchester City and Liverpool for the Premier League title. And well, it's destiny, isn't it? I mean, the last time Liverpool lost the league by one point to Manchester City, they then stormed the league in 2019-20 and whilst I don't think they'll storm the league this season I do think that they'll win it. I think there are just a couple of question marks over Manchester City more so than there are with Liverpool. The new striker obviously coming in with Erling Haaland very very high profile signing but that might mean the City have to readapt their game slightly. They've also brought in Calvin Phillips as well in rotation with Rodri and Alvarez, Julian Alvarez is potentially the perfect Gabriel Jesus replacement but Four key squad members have gone, you know, Raheem Sterling, Zinchenko, Fernandinho, and the aforementioned Jesus. Will that upheaval work in all competitions? I'm not quite sure. And maybe this might be the season after they've come so close in the last two campaigns where they might try to focus on just getting that Champions League trophy. Um, and it might yet come back to bite them. So with that in mind, I think Liverpool are going to be the champions. As I say, it almost feels like destiny that they'll win either the Premier League or the Champions League, if not both, considering how close they came in both competitions last season and how raring the squad will be to go again and put those wrongs right. Yes, they've lost Sadio Mane to Bayern Munich, which is huge for the club, but of course they've still got Diego Jota, they've signed Fabio Carvalho as well to fill that void, as well as Darwin Nunez, who is 
is a little bit expensive, but he had such an explosive cameo debut against Man City in the Community Shield, he's surely going to be a superstar at Anfield. Plus, Salah's new contract is massive and the core of the squad is still there. In my opinion, they're the champions in waiting. Now we move on to the second part of the video, which is my three big predictions for the Premier League teams or players or whatever it might be. And the first of them is that Spurs will actually win a trophy. I surely think, surely Antonio Conte is, has to be the man to take Spurs to that elusive piece of silverware that they have lacked for what will be 15 years by the point that they actually do win something if they do win something this season. I don't know which one it will be. I don't think it'll be the Champions League, but if they drop out of the Champions League into the Europa League, they're gonna be one of the favorites of that competition, undoubtedly. If anyone is going to take Spurs to a trophy, it's going to be Antonio Conte with the squad that he has right now with the additions that they've made, and it's going to be this season. And if they can't do it under him, and potentially not either this season or next couple of years, then when will they? and under who can they actually win a trophy. My second bold call in this video is that Erling Haaland will not be the top goal scorer this season or even come close. Pep's already come out and said that he might not play all of the games because of either trying to bend into the system or uh, trying to adjust to the style of the Premier League, etc., etc. Yes, of course, he is a huge rival for Manchester City, especially at the price that he was bought for because, well, he was probably worth in excess of 100 million pounds to Dortmund and City essentially got him for half of that as an upfront transfer fee. But there are still problems with his like injury record. Obviously he has a series of niggling injuries when he was at Dortmund and how quickly he'll be able to adjust to the style of the Premier League. This season I don't think is going to be the one where Erling Haaland essentially wins Manchester City the league and fires you know 70 goals in the campaign. He'll score a few goals of course. He won't go like goalless or anything like that. I think he'll get double figures but all those people who are saying like, you know, he's gonna score 40 goals or whatever this season and just blow away the league. I don't think it'll be this season, but it might be next. My third bold call is that Harry Maguire will have a renaissance under Eric Ten Hag. I mean, he has had his confidence shot to pieces after an awful campaign last time out, during which he received barrages of abuse. I think there was actually a survey that came out recently which said he was the most abused person on Twitter last season. Yes, of course, if he makes one mistake, he's probably gonna be vilified constantly, but there is a player in there, and if anyone is going to coax it out of him, it's going to be Eric Ten Hag, especially with his style of play. They might favour putting Lisandro Martinez at centre-back alongside Rafael Varane, but they could also put Martinez in defensive midfield and he'd do a really solid job there. And I think with that, it could mean that Maguire really starts to flourish once again and shows the form that he showed for Leicester and indeed still shows for England. But if he can get those doubters and those haters, so to speak, off his back, and really, really focuses on just making sure that he can be the best defender he can be, especially under Ten Hag's guidance and with his style of play. I think he's gonna have a good season this year. And for the final segments, I'm just gonna whiz through this thing about saying who I think is gonna win the European leagues, etc. because this video is already long enough as it is. So in Liga, I'm gonna go with PSG because obviously. In the Bundesliga, I'm gonna go with Bayern Munich because Again, obviously, for Serie A, which is the most difficult league to call in the entire of the Europe's top five leagues, I think, I'm gonna go with Juventus. In La Liga, I think Real are going to hang on to that crown in spite of Barcelona's incredible transfer policy, despite the fact they have about minus 50 pence and a packet of Starburst in their bank accounts. For the championship, I'm gonna go with Norwich, even though I know that Burnley are expected to win or have been predicted to win by a couple of people, but, I think even though they are in the Vincent company, they've lost so many key players and Norwich are just a pretty well-run club and they are caught in that rut of being too good for the championship, not good enough for the Premier League. So I think they're gonna win the championship this season. And for the Champions League, I'm gonna go with Liverpool. I think they're gonna do the big double that they really that they just missed out on last season and really wanna get. And I think they're gonna make amends this time around. So Liverpool are gonna be the Premier League and Champions League winners, in my opinion, in 2022. 23. And that just about wraps up today's video looking at my predictions for the 2022-23 season. Let me know if you think I'm wrong, which you probably will do, but let me know what you would change and what your predictions are down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget, like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You can ring the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video straight away. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I don't really post on there very often, but I'm gonna try and be a little bit more active. You can follow me using the link in the description down below, which takes you to my Twitter page, which is simply called Hazabajan. 
Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you then.